My name's Jennifer, and I'm 32 years old. I work in a busy city called New York, where people believe in working hard to succeed. My husband Donnie is 30 and works too. We got married two years ago. Donnie might seem a bit unreliable sometimes, but he's actually really kind. He's good at helping out with chores around the house. I'm a career-focused woman. I love my job and feel proud when I do well. In my job, if you work hard, you can move up. But there's a downside. Sometimes they might ask you to move to a different place. And if you want to have a baby, there's no rule about taking time off. Many women quit their jobs when they get married or have kids. I used to think the same way. I wanted to focus on my career and didn't plan on getting married. When Donnie asked me to marry him, I said no at first. I told him, I love my job. I'm in charge of a team now, but I want to go even higher. I can't imagine settling down or having kids. But Donnie understood. He promised we'd share the chores and wouldn't have kids. Eventually, I agreed to marry him because he was so understanding. Both Donnie and I work, so sometimes we don't split the chores exactly as we planned. But we help each other out, and I think we do pretty well. Sometimes, my in-laws make annoying comments like, you should focus more on your home than your job, or when are you having kids? But it's not too bothersome because Donnie always supports me. Living with Donnie has been nice, and I've learned to enjoy being married. Then, one day, my boss, who's the head of our department, called me about a possible move to a different office. He said, What do you think? You'd work at a branch office for a while, but you'd come back here after two years. You'd have a good position there, and if you do well, you'll get promoted when you come back. You might even become the first woman to lead a department. It's a pretty good opportunity, right? Accepting or refusing this move could decide if I'll get promoted at my job. Everyone who's become a boss or hire has done a move like this. If I say no, I might stay in my current job. But I could also get moved to a less important position. Before I got married, I would have taken this chance right away. But now, being married made me feel hesitant. I told my boss, Thank you for thinking of me. Personally, I'm interested. But since it involves moving, I want to talk to my husband first. Can I give you an answer after that? He said, All right, you're married. You can choose to go alone or move with your family. Talk it over. I'm hoping for a yes. When I got home, I talked to Donnie about it. I can offer a job transfer. I might have to move to the countryside, but if I do well for two years, I can come back here. And if I keep doing well, I could get promoted. I want to take this offer if you're okay with it, Donnie. We can move together, or I can go alone. What do you think? At first, Donnie was surprised, but then he thought about it and said, if you take this transfer, Jennifer, your dream could come true, right? I can't move with you because I have my job here, but don't worry about me. Go for it. With Donnie's support, I told the company I'd go for the transfer alone and started discussing the details. They agreed to pay for my moving costs and offered some good benefits, like considering my travel days as work days. So I decided to accept the transfer to the branch office. I got the official transfer order and chose to live in a company apartment, which was affordable. On moving day, the movers had already taken my stuff and Donnie came to say goodbye at the station. Thanks for seeing me off. I'll keep in touch and I'll try to come home as much as I can. Yeah, I'll be waiting. But remember, even though you're working from afar, don't overdo it, Donnie said. You too, I replied. It's time. Take care, okay. I'm heading out. Donnie said as he left. And that's how my life as a remote worker began. I planned to come home during holidays and quieter times, but things got rocky at the branch office right after I arrived. I won't take orders from a woman. How can I trust someone new like her? One of the local employees complained. I faced resistance from the staff there. They spread rumors about me, didn't listen to my instructions, and even ignored my calls. And then things got worse when a project I was overseeing had a big mistake because one of my team members deliberately kept me out of the loop. The subordinate who was responsible looked really shocked, but as the boss, it was my job to handle it. I had to fix the problem, apologize, and not only get things back on track, but also mend relationships with my team. My boss saw how tough things were for me and gave me some advice. I've been through a transfer too, so I get it. It might not seem fair but you can't just push your way through. It's important to communicate well, understand others, and build relationships horizontally. So I followed my boss's advice. 
I spent more time getting to know everyone at the branch and even joined the neighborhood association since the company's housing was part of it. Before I knew it, I was so busy that I couldn't find time for myself, let alone go back home where my husband was waiting. I kept in touch with him, but after a few months of remote work, it got hard to reach him at night. I'm working late every day because work is tough. I get tired and end up falling asleep. As my husband made excuses and I got busier with work, I didn't suspect anything and focused more on my job. Once during a slow work period on a long holiday, I decided to go back home to New York on short notice. But I couldn't reach my husband by phone or text, so I returned from my remote work without telling him. When I opened the door to our home after a long time away, something felt strange. Then a woman I didn't recognize rushed to the door, saying, Justin, welcome back. If I knew you were coming home early, I would have prepared. We both froze, staring at each other in shock. Finally, the woman spoke up, Um, sorry, but who are you? And who are you? This is my house. Wait, what? I live here. After arguing and getting nowhere, we decided to check the house number outside. To my surprise, it matched the custom nameplate I had ordered. The key works, and the nameplate's right. This is my house. I'm going in, I insisted. Wait, what? Stop. Ignoring her protests, I pushed past her and entered the house. Inside, everything had changed. The curtains, the furniture, all of it. There was a photo of my husband and the woman at a theme park. Mugs I'd never seen before, and unfamiliar toothbrushes and skincare items in the bathroom. The bed linens were different and the wardrobe held only the woman's clothes. My husband's stuff was hidden away in a back room. As I stood there in shock, I heard the front door open. I'm home. Oh, Lola, did you invite a friend over? Justin, thank goodness you're back. This woman just barged into our house. The man the woman called Justin was definitely my husband, Donnie. Seeing me, he looked surprised. What are you doing here? Donnie, why is she calling you Justin? Can you explain what's happening? I asked him. What do you mean? This is Justin, right? Justin. Well, actually, my husband seemed flustered under our questioning. Lola, his real name is Donnie. Isn't that what's on your driver's license? And I'm Donnie's wife, Jennifer. That's not true. He told me he was divorced. Donnie, you need to explain everything clearly, I insisted. Jennifer, you were gone for so long, and I was lonely. So I thought I'd try a dating app, and that's where I met Lola. Donnie explained. So Justin is your fake name on the dating app? I questioned. No, it's not like that. I was worried if my real name came out. It might cause problems, so I used a different first name but kept my last name, Donnie clarified. And why did you lie about being divorced? I pressed further. Lola's profile said she'd never dated a man before and was serious about finding someone for marriage. It struck a chord with me, so I lied about being divorced to win her over. We started living together, Donnie admitted. Why would you do something like that? I asked, puzzled. At that moment, my husband began justifying his actions defiantly. It's because you're always away for work. It's natural for a man to want companionship. We've been living separate lives because of your job and the long hours. I just wanted a warm home where my wife would be there with dinner when I got back. I was shocked to hear this as I always thought my husband understood and supported my career, but that doesn't excuse what you did. What you did was wrong. If you wanted to be with someone else, you should have ended our marriage first. Why didn't you do the right thing? I cared about both of you. I never wanted to leave either of you. After everything you've done, I was bound to find out when I came back. It's unbelievable that you thought you could deceive me like this. Well, it's your fault for not keeping your promise and coming back. If you had, I wouldn't have even thought about cheating. What on earth? I've told you how hard work has been. And you still did this. I yelled, feeling a mix of anger and hurt. Our argument escalated into a shouting match, with the woman my husband cheated with standing there, looking stunned. She realized she'd been tricked by a married man into his mess. So everything was a lie. You played me for a fool. I'm leaving right now, she exclaimed. Lola, wait, it's not what you think, my husband pleaded, but it was too late. My husband tried to stop the other woman from leaving, but she brushed him off, repulsed. Don't touch me with your filthy hands. I can't believe a single word you say. She cursed before storming out, packing her things and leaving for her parents' house. Furious with my husband, I decided to take action against his betrayal. 
gathering evidence, I brought it back with me when I returned to work. The first thing I did was hire a detective to look into my husband's mistress. The investigation revealed that she was the daughter of an executive at a company partnered with my husband's workplace. I had a lawyer send proof of the affair to both my husband's home and the other woman's parents. When my husband received the documents, he protested, saying he didn't want a divorce. So I prepare for a tough legal battle, even considering going to court. The other woman's family contacted my lawyer, and we arranged to meet at their office. They apologized to me, and the other woman admitted her wrongdoing. We're truly sorry. Our daughter caused you so much trouble, and we didn't even know about it. She's always been very sheltered and naive about the world. We've been trying to arrange a marriage for her, but she wanted a more free-spirited love. She met your husband without our knowledge and got carried away without knowing who he really was. She thought she found a divorced man on a dating app and wanted to move in with him. We told her to stop seeing him, but she didn't listen. She was so caught up in her fantasies that she ran away from home to be with him. Our daughter was shocked to find out she was the other woman and blames herself. She's getting therapy now. We're willing to pay you $50,000 as a settlement and hope you'll keep this matter private. The other woman and her parents shook my hand firmly. I understand your apology, but I have one condition. I'm preparing for a divorce, but my husband won't agree. If you're willing to cooperate and provide testimony if this goes to trial, then I'll accept the settlement. Okay, we'll cooperate, but we don't want our daughter to have a permanent record of this. Is there any other way we can help punish him? Well, it just so happens that his workplace is our client. In an unexpected turn of events, the woman my husband cheated with and I teamed up. We planned to give him a taste of his own medicine. His workplace was about to face a crisis because he had upset an executive at one of their client companies. And guess who would take the fall? Only my husband. Meanwhile, back at home, his parents were trying to reach out to him, unaware of the chaos. Jennifer isn't answering our calls, and she won't call back either. Is she so caught up in work that she forgot about us? When is she coming back? We miss seeing our grandchild, his mother said. Mom, you don't get it. I cheated on Jennifer while she was away, and now it looks like we're headed for divorce, my husband confessed. His mother replied, that woman who puts work before her husband is to blame. Maybe it's better if you end things with Jennifer and get back together with the woman you cheated with. My in-laws seemed to think that the other woman's family had more money than ours, so they sided with my husband and his lover, attacking me relentlessly. They called me repeatedly, but I blocked their calls. Then, they started calling me at work. When I refused to talk to them, they showed up at my workplace, causing a scene. Let go of our son. It's because of you being such a career-focused woman that our son cheated. He'd be happier with his lover, so stop interfering. They demanded. What are you even saying? I want to divorce Donnie. He's the one refusing. Plus, the woman he cheated with doesn't want him back. He tricked the daughter of a big-shot executive into dating him, and they're furious. It's going to be a big mess, I explained. Once they realized their son had angered an important client, my in-laws suddenly changed sides and tried to be nice to me. We had no idea it was this serious. We must have misunderstood. We're sorry. Our son messed up, but he feels bad. You'll forgive him, right, Jennifer? They pleaded. I have to decline. You just insulted me, and now you're asking for forgiveness? Please leave, I told them firmly. When they refused to leave, I had security escort them out. Because of the scene they caused, my company decided to sue them for disrupting business. After all the drama, I finally got the compensation from my husband and got the divorce. The other woman's family also demanded compensation for their daughter's suffering and therapy costs. With the loss of his job and having to pay hefty settlements, my husband was now in deep debt. He couldn't afford to quit, and he was trapped. Two years had passed since my assignment started. When everything settled down, I finished my assignment successfully and was getting ready to go back to the main office. My hard work paid off, and I got promoted to department manager. If I hadn't taken the assignment, I might still be stuck in a loveless marriage but I realize now that a man like him would have cheated sooner or later, and I would have clashed with his parents anyway. I've learned that I'm better suited for work than family life, and I'm incredibly fulfilled and happy now.